Morning. So we're at Fowler and Gilbert headquarters this morning and we're going to go and have a look at the steel journey now for the rafters for the big side being fabricated. MCS just had a delivery of roof cladding and materials. We've got Chorley's in the background there dropping some more steel off for another project. So let's go and see how they're getting on with the steel work. Couldn't have timed it better actually, the guys are on uh, morning break so we'll go through a bit of the process and how we manufacture the, the rafters here. So when the rafters come in they don't need to go into the prep bay generally because there's no real holes in them that need putting in. So it's just a case of the raw material comes in, it's already cropped to length on the bevel that we want it cut to. So it comes in, gets stacked behind the welding pen and then they will take off two, generally two rafters at a time, we, we fabricate them in pairs, <coughs> unless they're overly complicated or overly big. These ones are not so bad, so we'll do two at a time. We'll take two off, put them on the trestles, and then obviously we'll go get the drawings, mark out what's to be fabricate, uh, what's to be welded to them, grab the parts from the part pallet, put them on, weld them all together, away we go, check in and out the door. So, we'll have a look at the drawings. So what we've got, we're fabricating the plain doubles at the minute, which I'll explain what they are in a sec. We've got a rook here, so we'll go through these now on the drawing and show you what we've got. So this is, a, like I say, a plain double. And what I mean by plain double is on, on a building you will have the brace bays, and the brace bays have got bracing cleats that are welded within the web of the steel, or on the gable ends of the building, or where there's any, where there's any internal walls there'll be uh, gable hanging cleats, which I'll show you in a second on a different drawing. But a plain double, basically we need 10 rafters required and they're all RA1. So on this drawing here, a little bit like the, the parts drawings, we've got every bit of information we could possibly need to be able to fabricate this piece of steel. So what we got, we, the first thing we start with is double checking the length of the rafter. Now these have been checked before they come in, but it's just another checking method. So what we do is we check this measurement here, which goes, uh, sorry, this way down, so it's from the long to the long. So we'll double check that measurement and make sure that the overall is 7126. And if it is, or within a few mil, then we know we've got the right piece of steel for this job. So basically it's already checked outside. It then comes in, we double check that long to long measurement in here. So we also double check the bevel measurement. So from the longest edge there of this piece of steel to the shortest edge, that's the bevel, as in the angle. And that there should be 81 mil. So we'll drop a square, a big square on, on the underside, just double check and measure that, and then we know we've got the right degree pitch at both ends. Then at that point, what we'll do is we'll start to mark everything out. Like I say, everything on here is noted. So again, we start with an 81 mil offset on the tape measure from the short, uh, the short length, and then we'll put the first cleat at 303, which you can see the cleat is then top side of the line and then we've got a choice. You can either go 303, 1300, 1800, and they're the gaps between your purling spaces. Your purlings get bolted onto these cleats, or you can just run your tape out and do a running measurement. So start one, 303, second one, 1603, 3403. So if you add all them up, basically they equal that. The good thing about doing it both ways is what we can do is we'll mark it out with a running measurement, and then we can double check one, two, three, four, five. Them individual measurements are all right, and we know that we should have 123 mil left at the end to the long measurement. And that's just a double, a way of double checking. We've got them marked in the right place. So it's quite handy to do that. These here are the haunches. These here are the end plates. So you've seen the plates being made on an earlier video. And what we do, um, each weld will be, it'll be on here somewhere. So here we go. So we've got all holes to be 22 mil, so we know that the holes in the plate are gonna be 22 mil, which we'll check before we weld it on. Um, this gives you which way round the plate is going. Then we've got all welds to be a six mil fillet weld unless noted otherwise. So we know that every weld on this piece of steel is gonna be a six mil fillet weld unless it's noted, and that's that note there. So you've got an eight mil fillet weld at the top, an eight mil at the bottom, um, same again on the haunch, you've got 8mm fillet welds on the haunch, but all the cleats basically are going to be a 6mm fillet weld because there's no note otherwise there. 
You've got your assembly list in the corner, so every single part that is going to be welded or, or that makes this rafter is noted here. So you can see we've got the main steel, which is the Mark M15, which is 305-165-40, so that's the grade, that's the size and grade of the steel with the length. So that's the first assembly item. <clears throat> then you've got the haunches, then you've got the 120 by 6 which I can tell you now is the purling cleats. You've got the 180 by 20 which is the plate, well both of them actually, F3 and F5 are the two plates for the ends, so the, what we call the end plates. So like I've just noted on the drawings, that's your end plate, they are 22mm holes which we'll check, we'll check the hole centres as well before that's welded on. The process is that that gets tacked on, we get it all set up level wise where we want it, we mark it all out. Um, each piece of steel as well is noted in terms of the, the project number, so our project number on this one is welded on and then we've got the, the assembly mark. So when the guys on site come to erect the building, they know that they've got a drawing that says number one goes with number two, and you bolt them two together. So we've got the assembly mark welded on the top of the steel there. It's on the top, so from down here when the building's erected, you can't see it because we haven't got a dirty great weld mark that you're looking at, so that's why we put it on the top. All the cleats are put on, welded on, like I say, six mil fillet, eight mil, in, the, in and around the end plates of the haunch because that's a bigger weld there for a stronger weld um, and these are fully welded haunches as well so the weld is a continuous one weld all the way along show you the process of how they put it together now so obviously when we put the tape measure on we set the 83 mil bevel or whatever it was as a start point and then you've got your first two measurements there and there which we transfer down and into the web and there your whole center measurements of your bracing cleat, your first bracing cleat. This is RA4, so we chalk it on, chalk the job number on, which is welded on afterwards, and then each one of these marks as we go along are the purling measurements. So again, we just put 1603, so we can double check that after before we weld it up. We don't want to be welding everything up and then finding we've got a cleat in the wrong place, you've got to cut it off and try and make good afterwards and waste time and money. So you've got the length measurement, which is 1603, and then there's an inset measurement, which is marked here, then as we go along. We also put a little line on the top side to say that wherever you've marked, your material is being welded on the top side of that mark. Then we lay the cleats out like that along the top, and then what they'll do is they'll get masked up and come back, tack everything up, and I'll explain how we tack it and why we do it in a certain order as well. So that's the end plate that's about to be tacked on the end and what we do, we check the whole centres, check the whole uh, diameter, so right, everything's in the right place and if it is, then you've got an offset measurement down, or, or sorry, from the whole centre up and that line there that we put on is where it's going to be welded onto the top level of that and that's how we get it in line to make sure, if you can picture, if we didn't put that line on and the rafter's going up like that, you've got the end plate on, effectively that plate will be bolted to the post but we need to make sure that the rafter is in the right place like that. So that's what we'll tack on now. So now we've tacked the end plates on, so there's just a brief little tack there and there, and then what we need to do is make sure the bevel is absolutely perfect. So we've got templates then that we hang on the steel and make sure that each and every one is exactly right. So because we only tack them, if we need to alter the bevel, so if that cut is ever so slightly out, we can alter it at this stage and then re-tack it and we know that every single rafter we've produced is all at exactly the same bevel, so therefore on the roof when they come to be fitted, they'll all be exactly in the right place, because if the bevel's slightly wrong, that will alter the pitch of the roof. So what he'll do now is he's going to fully tack it up and then he'll weld all the top in. And when you're welding stuff, you generating an, an immense amount of heat in a product and obviously steel with heat will bend and move, warp and twist. So there's an order in which you have to do everything and sometimes you know it's going to move so you do it in a certain order or you leave it slightly out so that it will move back to where you want it to be when it's finished welded up. So he's welding the top of the end plate on now 
then they will go through, weld all the purling cleats along the top, and then you will always weld down bank, so on the flat, if you like. So then that steel will rotate as we go through the fabrication process, and you'll weld each and every time on the, on the flat surface there. Because what you don't want to be doing is trying to weld upside down or making anything more awkward than it needs to be. So when they come to weld the purling cleats on, you'll get the purling cleat, make sure it's in the right orientation. You don't want to weld it on upside down for argument's sake. So you check the drawings, make sure it's right. You put it on, side where the tick is or the cross is to say that's the side of the line we're welding. You move it up to the line, into the offset position. And then once you've got it there, that's when you'll tack it. Now, when you tack it, you'll watch them do it in a minute and you'll find that they'll tack both sides or one side and then immediately weld the second side. If you put a tack on here, on this side, it will naturally pull that cleat in that orientation because of the heat. If then you didn't tack the other side and welded that cleat on from this side, that will just continually, because of the heat, it will continually keel over like that and you'll end up with it like that at the end, which is no good. So what you'll find is when they tack them on, they'll tack one side, tack the other and then weld it up so they've got it perfectly straight. Check it with a square so we know it's at 90 degrees and then it'll be welded on. Okay, so we are going to cut it short today and come back with the first few minutes of the next episode, just finishing off the fabrication process of the rafters and there will be a workshop and GoPro montage. So as of now, we're going to sign off, leave you guys with a little snippet of what's in the next episode. And if you like what you've seen, please hit subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We'll catch you next time. Cheers. So that's the horn that we showed you early on that's cut. So you can see we've tacked it on. There's a tack at the top, there's a tack on the other side in the bottom which holds everything exactly where it wants to be. These are just the rackets, they're just the pieces to go up and down in the roof and bolt together.